they're, it, it's all within that family. And, uh, attack the C-gaps, again, trying to get you stretched. Uh, then let the running back do his thing. You know, so he's, he's, he's either going to ride the wave or he's going to pop the clutch and try to hit a cutback. And, you know, we have to do a great job of uh, setting edges and uh, rallying to the football. Uh, but it, it, the work's not done after that because the guy can break tackles. Again, he's a, he's a really good back, top back in this league. Uh, as far as Diggs is concerned, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's crafty. He's got really good speed, really good hands. Uh, he's great with the ball after the catch. So we just got to keep our eyes disciplined cover him tight, and then tackle if he catches it. How happy are you with the ability for the defense to keep getting those turnovers through that bye week? It's just us staying true, and that's, that's it. It's just, we just have to continue to stay true, continue to go to work, continue to do right, and just do right longer. What did you assess Michael Bennett's first game? I thought he had a really productive first game, considering that he hadn't truly played a lot of football with maybe in about a month, three weeks to a month. So for him to come out there and uh, kind of – take off where he left off from was a really work for our benefit. What does he do well? Who's what does that? he do best, Michael? Michael Bennett? Yeah. I, I think he can access the football play. Uh, again, he's a, he's a really smart football player. Again, he gets off on the ball, but he, he understands how the offense is trying to attack him in, in particular than us overall. How much did it help that he knows your defense to be able to come in and play right away? Yeah, it matters. Yeah, a, absolutely. It matters. So it's... Um, Again, that, that, to my point earlier, you know, like you, you take off where you left off, even though it has been a couple of years since he, quote unquote, has been in the system, uh, that there's a lot of things that we uh, have carried over. You did a great job against Saquon in the run game. Is Dalvin similar in terms of the challenge he poses to the defenses and receivers in the Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, they utilize him in the same fashion. They're not the same type or style of runner, but um, they're very effective, very good speed, really powerful. Both have great contact balance. Um, one cut runners, they make a decision, stick their foot in the ground and go, and uh, they're committed to their system. So uh, definitely a challenge. The difference being? The uh, difference being Saquon's more of a split leg type runner. Again, can get square, uh, bounce inside and out. Uh, I would say Dalvin's more of a, a linear one cut type, stick his foot in the ground, um, again, really runs well behind his pads uh, and with great contact balance. Well, first, I admire you for Answering Shireen's question. Oh, thank she's you. Wearing the Joe Cap jersey. That's that's okay. <laughs> that, 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 that's that's okay. Yeah, that, that's okay. Uh, why can't it be TC? Ah, yeah, there it is. There it is. Yes. She'd make nice a good DB backpedaling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you look at the Vikings, coach, I mean, they started out they want to be running team. That's what Zimmer wants to do: run run the ball, play defense, and they became just throwing teams. And this past week, you said you threw the ball too much. Obviously, you got to be ready for everything. But yeah. How do you view the Vikings? Yeah, balance. Balance yeah. attack, um, effective offense. Um, obviously, again, it starts with their running game. So Coach Zimmer is exactly right. Uh, it's the foundation of their offense is their running game, how they are, they're, they're able to move people, get them working sideways. Uh, then after that, they, they, they drive the ball down the field with their boots and uh, deep overs. So it's, uh, it's a nice balance. So it's a nice combination of, of, of the run and play action with the boots and deep overs working. Yeah, always, yes, absolutely. And that's why, again, staying true, staying true to who you are, whoever you believe you are. you got to stay true to that. We'll stay true to who we are. And, um, and that's, that's faith, right? Believing in the unseen. What was it like to see Xavier Woods win defensive player of the week this week? Oh, it's humbling. You know, it's humbling. So if the guy comes in, he, he, he does work, uh, doesn't say very much. Um, I mean, he, he's a humble individual as is. So it's uh, pretty cool just to see kind of the uh, fruition of it, you know? So it's, uh, he's able kind of to... Uh, reap the harvest there, right? So he's, he's, he's sown pretty, pretty deep in with uh, just staying true, doing things right consistently, staying humble, and now he's able to reap reward. Well, he's yeah. trending in that same direction, so how do you know he's played? Yeah, same, yeah same, same way. You know, he's been very productive for us um, and, and in the same fashion, right? He's just stayed ready. He stayed ready until his number was called, and when it was called, he was prepared. Gary. Oh, sorry. Darian Thompson continues to take advantage of opportunities like Lewis. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on his production? Yeah, same, same. You know, it's a, and that's that's the really cool part about the room is is that we all understand and everyone understands that you're just one play away. So right. you never ever prepare like you're a backup. You prepare like you're a starter because you never know when it's going to happen. When an opportunity comes, you have to be ready and able to take full advantage of it. How does pressure affect? Kirk Cousins. It affects every quarterback. Yeah, sure. Some more than others. Yep. From what you've seen, how does it affect the play of the quarterback in the Vikings? Yeah, same, same. Like just, just like it, it affects everyone. Um, but like I said, the, the running game is a quarterback's best friend. So like it, it absolutely starts there. It starts with stopping the run, and without us stopping the run, we won't be able to affect them and get pressure on. Them. Chris, last week we saw some names 
safety spot, maybe the Cowboys making a trade. Mm -hmm. I know it's speculation, but do you think that that maybe motivated Xavier, Jeff? Do you think those things motivate guys or not? No, not really. It's right. It's all just staying locked in on and, and really staying focused on what you can control. At the end of the day, whatever decisions are made outside of your control really has no bearing on who you and what you do. It's not who you are. It's not what you do. And uh, the second that you allow yourself to become distracted by all those different things, like you're doing a disservice to yourself and to the team. Do you think a guy like Xavier understands that, though, given his youth? Jeff would, you would, but mm -hmm. would a guy that young get that? Well, this isn't his first rodeo. What was all the conversation last year? So, yeah, he, same thing. So he's been through it already. So, yeah, absolutely. He can, he can handle it because he's shown he can. He handled it last year. Is there a perception that you have a particular type of corner and Jordan doesn't fit that? So how does Jordan say, I don't fit this with my coach wants, mm -hmm. but I still need to play. I nope. want to play. How does yeah. he overcome that? He fits exactly what we want. He fits exactly what I want. And it starts with the condition of your heart. And that's the main thing. So for all the size, the height, the length, the speed, if you don't have the heart to do it and do it properly, then it won't work. So he absolutely has the heart. Like I said, that dude's got a big heart, and that's why it works, and that's why he works for us. What did you see from him when he didn't have the opportunity to be a nickel corner, to be the guy who's seeing regular snaps? What did he show you during the period when he was a backup? It's always being prepared, doing things right consistently and battling all the way through the finish. Uh, he, he has a tremendous competitive nature about him, and I, I, I truly believe that you can attribute that to his heart. With Anthony, obviously when Anthony Brown went down, that opened things up a bit for mm -hmm. him, but what ultimately dictated that this opportunity as a nickel corner would be something that would be long-standing for him? It's just maximizing the opportunity, continuously getting, or continuing to be productive and um, showing what he's capable of down in and down out. I believe it's innate, you know, like the, 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 the great players, like it, it's, a, it's an innate ability that they have. Uh, could it be taught? Sure. Like I said, it's just pitch and catch, you know, um, again, training, eye discipline, driving through the target, playing the blur of the ball. Um, that, that's the coach's responsibility. And that, that's, again, that, that's what the drills are designed to do. But at the end of it all, like it, it really comes down to, again, it's either you got a knack for it or you don't. There's one handed catch on with Byron. Mm. And it's almost, I don't know, there's nothing he can really do in those situations. What do you tell him after that? Like, just keep playing because the guy made a great catch? Yeah, or no doubt. There's a teaching point there for him. Yeah, it, uh, the teaching point is, again, be humble because it can happen to anybody at any time. But every now and again, you got to tip your hat to your opponent um, and make them be spectacular, right? So you have to be spectacular in order to get a catch on the guy in that fashion. Well, sometimes it happens. How do you define ball skill? <sighs> the ability to take it away. Is it, so it's not, is it just... It's not just catching. It's and, not just catching. No, it's not, it's not just catching. It's the ability to, again, take it away, to, to stop the receiver from catching it. So whether it's with an interception or whether it's a, a PBU, it's like, do, do, do we have the ability to, to knock it away, to keep it away from them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I thought he, obviously, right, it's, you got an all pro stepping in for a Pro Bowl player. So it's kind of an embarrassment of riches. Uh, it's a luxury for us. Um, we're thrilled to be able to get replace a guy of uh, latent stature with a guy like Sean Lee, someone who prepares out of this world, um, and one of the best guys in football. You know, that's, that's what I've grown to understand from him. What makes the Vikings so successful at those outside zone runs under QBX? It's, it's a system. They bought into it. Uh, I think they've got a really good offensive line coach who can teach their principles. He's taught it for years. He's had success everywhere that he's been, and it just kind of has followed him and, and with their system throughout the years. Michael, Michael has a, a rap that he's hard to coach, but you've had a great relationship <laughs> with him throughout. Is, yep. is that a bad rap for him, or what yeah. makes your relationship with him so special? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's. I, I believe it's a it's a bad rap, yeah. and you know, like when you when you have an intelligent football player that has information and knowledge, and um, you you have to be able to accept and receive it and utilize it. You know, like those are the guys that are out there playing the game, and. Um, you know, when, when they have information and they're willing to share it, you know, like, you value it. Yeah. Is he similar to Sherman in terms of, he's going to speak his mind. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I guess you could say in a respectful way. Is that no question. Like Michael is? No, no question. No question about it. You know, and it's, um, I haven't ever seen a negative or bad intent behind him. So it's like, all right, yeah, consider the source. You have to know who he is. You have to know what he's about. And then, again, value the information that he gives. Sometimes coaches have this. Oh, I'm the coach, I'm the ultimate authority, so but how do you say balance that where I'm gonna let you speak because yeah. you, you 
it is, it is the ultimate truth, right? Yeah, you, you do have the ultimate, but it comes with humility. So, like, if you, you think you put air in the first football, it's like, no, like you, did, you didn't put air in the first football. So you can't act like you went out there and you know it all. You know, it's like, no, you don't know it all. So like, we're continuously learning also, right? In the same fashion to where uh, the second that they stop learning and the second that we stop learning, we stop growing and then we're done. So we're always learning and growing. Every time we step out there, we feel as though we built for any situation that that we that comes about. So, absolutely, yes. What's it like, uh, um, what's it like to have gets you gets your discipline mm -hmm. and gets your way of doing things? Yeah, no, it's uh, especially at this time of year. You know, it's like we we're not taking that for granted. You know, it's um. Like there's still a whole lot of work for us to do, so we know that and understand that. But grabbing grabbing a player like Mike, who, uh, who who's, who's made a living, you know, being disruptive, being really disruptive, um, hard to block, you know, and and he does. He plays within our system, and the cool part about him is that he understands the system. He understands how the offense is going to attack us, and again, how the offense is trying to attack him in particular.